Grenville College was held up as a model, a private boarding school, where students would be surrounded by Christian love. But Dan Michelson claims what he received was psychological torture. You were there for four years. Four years. How the heck did you survive that? Or did you? For Andrew Hale Byrne, the constant screaming and criticism, so-called light sessions, broke his teenage spirit. After two years of being there, I was totally, I normalized it. And I, I came to believe that I deserved to be treated this way, that I was garbage, filth, trash. And I didn't, and we were told, you know, God hates you, God, God doesn't love you, you're damned. And um, uh, I came to just normalize this. It was a far cry from what the headmaster, Charles Farnsworth, promised. I know quite well that I ought not to have all I ask for. I He's seen here in this home video. Father Farnsworth, an Anglican priest. He came to the school in 1972. By 1983, he was in charge, a position he held for the next 14 years. In this document, obtained by W5, Farnsworth insisted his goal was to leave students with an indelible imprint of what the Christian life was all about. For Dan Michelson, it was a vision of hell. Charles Farnsworth, what was he like? Very angry little man. The school was uh, heated by a wood chip boiler system. There's windows that would show the, uh, the, the, the wood chips burning. Charles Farnsworth uh, grabbed, scrapped the neck and, and it's just looking there, you know. In the boiler. In, in the boiler kind of thing. You see those flames in there? You know, that's hell. And that's and that and you know and if you look if you look closely in there, you can see yourself in there because that's where you're headed to. You're 16, 15, 16 years old. What are you thinking? I'm t absolutely terrified. I it's. Did you at any time say I gotta write a letter to my parents and tell them? Yeah, because after my first time on discipline, I wrote a letter to my parents, and. Um, I remember putting my letter in the mailbox, the mail going out there kind of thing. And then a few hours later, I was called into the headmaster's office. Charles Farnsworth. Yeah. Screaming at me, you know, that was spreading lies about the school. And he, and he says, you know what? You're going to write home a truthful letter about what's happening here. Truthful being what a great place a sterile, this is. I, I guess you could call it the sterile letter. The st sterile le letter about, you know, what happens here, how, how happy it was kind of thing and how loved the food, loved the teachers. Mm, yeah. For Andrew Hale Byrne, the stories of intimidation and alleged abuse are all too common. He's one of the main plaintiffs in a $200 million lawsuit, a class action, on behalf of hundreds of former boarding school students claiming systemic abuse and bizarre religious practices at the hands of the supposedly Christian staff at Granville. Did you ever see an exorcism? Yes. I suffered one for suffering from the sin of dyslexia. Because you see, the, what part of their, their, their beliefs, um, they had a belief that all um, illness, disability, or anything that they saw as an infirmity, um, as a negative, was the product of unconfessed sin, which invited Satan into one's life to cause that illness or disability, what have you. So what happens? Do they, does somebody stand over you with a Bible or something and say, devil be gone? Charles Farnsworth would actually speak at what he, at the, the demon that was allegedly possessing you, okay, and command it to leave. And he started throwing holy water around, you know, it'd slap you on the back of the neck, you might get startled, he'd say, ah, clear the room, we're going to fight the battle with the devil. He was a devil digger. Had he been born 400 years ago, he would have been burning witches at Salem. And young women at Grenville were apparently singled out by Farnsworth. Go on, baby. Young women like Sheila Coons, who the headmaster saw as the devil incarnate. He would um, say that I had a devil-inspired body and that I was tempting men by my devil-inspired body. Um, he compared me to Lucifer because at the time I was blonde um, and uh, Lucifer apparently was blonde, I don't know. According to Sheila, and confirmed by other former Grenville students we talked to, Farnsworth would often accuse female students of inviting sexual attention. Father Farnsworth took me into the vestry and um, 
He told me that I was a whore and I looked like a whore and I had really no alternative in life but to be a whore. We were told that, you know, women were responsible for anything um, sexual, for turning men on or whatever, turning the boys on, that we were, um, that men just looked at us as pieces of meat. And if a woman got raped, that was her fault because she was a temptress, as Eve was a temptress as Jezebel was a temptress, you know, and then the list goes on. There are women teachers there. Mm -hmm. Are they not standing forward and saying, don't talk to the girls like this? No, it's a very strange thing. No, no women teachers did that. No women teachers, no, no teachers, no adults at all stood up to this man. Nobody. Why did. not? I don't know. This had to have been like water torture for you as a 16-year-old, 17-year-old. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sheila claims that Farnsworth's tirades hid his own lust. Did Charles Farnsworth ever come on to you? Yes, he did, actually. He would call me up to his office frequently, take me out of class, um, and then tell me what a, a sinful creature I was. At the time, I thought he was obsessed with me. Um, I don't know, I, perhaps, I guess I found out later that he was doing it to other girls as well. On this one occasion, um, he stood up, um, he pressed his body against mine. He said, mm, you smell good. And he clenched me to him and um, put his um, mouth on my neck and um, licked it. And uh, he pressed his hips up against mine. He must have felt sick. No, I just felt numb. All this from an Anglican priest at a private school that touted its connection to the church and claimed to be teaching Christian values. At any time, did anyone from the Anglican Church, any of the leaders, come there and... Oh, yes. Yes, and we were told, actually, at the time, um, to put on a good show for them. Bishops from the diocese in nearby Kingston had visited and officiated at Grenville ceremonies. So we would smile. We were supposed to smile, 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 and we were supposed to treat them, in the words of Father Farnsworth, um, as though they were Jesus Christ himself or something. And so I do not understand to this day why the Anglican Church was involved with that hellhole pit of a school. It wasn't Anglican. We used the Anglican prayer book, but the, 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 the sermons and the such, uh, those were not, that wasn't Anglican. In court filings, the Anglican Church has denied knowing what was going on at Grenville. Certainly not until the school had already closed in 2007, 10 years after Charles Farnsworth stopped being headmaster. W5 approached the Ontario Diocese, who refused our request for an interview, but did send this statement. The Diocese of Ontario takes all allegations, reports, or concerns regarding any form of abuse very seriously. While the Diocese of Ontario was never involved in the governance or operation of Grenville Christian College, when it was first informed of complaints, an investigation was begun. An investigation that was never completed as the Ontario Provincial Police also began looking into the allegations of abuse. Although originally named in the class action, the Anglican Church convinced the court to dismiss the case against it. The court ruled, the diocese were not involved in the management, operation, supervision and staffing of the schools, and so the church had no duty of care to the students. The court further ruled there is no evidence of any direct involvement by the diocese at the school in the various abuses. As for the OPP, here in Prescott, about 15 minutes down the highway from Grenville Christian College, the Ontario Provincial Police conducted its own criminal investigation in 2007. At the time, the police interviewed 23 alleged victims. A year later, the OPP, in consultation with the Crown Attorney's Office, decided not to lay charges. W5 wanted to know more about that investigation and the decision made not to lay charges. But the OPP refused our request for an interview. Leaving former students like Andrew Hale Byrne to seek justice through the lawsuit. He's also writing a book about his experiences. What is justice for you and the former students who had been abused? It's validation of the truth, okay? It's, it's finally getting this out there and accepting that it happened. You're advocating for so many of the victims of Granville. You're hearing their stories and you know what went on. Does that tear at your soul? It, it saddens me that so many people have had missed opportunities. 
I mean, just even in my own life, I would say, when I was offered promotions at work, I would often say to other members, other colleagues, oh, you take it, I don't want it, because I didn't feel I was worthy. You know, you, your, your, your personality, your, your image, self-image was just totally trashed at Grenville. Mm -hmm. And we were called trash, and we were told that's all we deserved. And we thought it was us. We blamed ourselves as abuse victims all often do. Next, decades-old anger and pain. So this is a cult, and you guys are going to be exposed one day. And seeking answers. Did anybody get held responsible? When W5 continues, in a moment. It could get physically abusive at times. Young students powerless to fight back. This guy sounds like a sadist. He was a sadist. We'll be right back.